What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, flu test, or a test for some other virus, I hope you have tested negative. If you did test positive for any of the viruses, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues and no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Virus Update for Wednesday, May 14th, 2025. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. If you want to stay informed with what's going on, subscribe down below, give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and share this video with anyone that you know. And of course, leave your comments down below. I'm sure there's something that I will show today that may spark something in your mind that say, hey, maybe I want to comment on that. Just do so down below. Alrighty, we do have several news stories to talk about today. And of course, we do have some data to look at. Uh, New York State, uh, some EMS data. And we're going to take a look at a few wastewater sites today as well. We did one earlier in the day in the shorts. And well, I found another one that needs attention as well. Alrighty, starting off in Iran. And we're just talking about the international COVID front here. Not going to read a whole story, but in Iran, they are starting to experience a rise in COVID-19 cases as, get this, experts urge return to masks. Yeah, you don't hear that too often, but uh, yeah, Iran is experiencing a rise in cases. I'm not seeing exact numbers show up here for increases. They're just stating that Iran is witnessing a renewed rise in COVID-19 cases, prompting health experts to recommend that vulnerable individuals wear masks in public places, particularly in crowded, enclosed areas, the state-run Islamic Republic News Agency report. Okay, moving on to this next story, which I believe is somewhere else. Yes, now in this case, we do have case numbers. Taiwan, things are not going well at all. Things are getting worse. COVID-19 cases surge across Taiwan with nearly 10,000 seeking medical care. Peak of this year's COVID-19 outbreak is expected to occur in June, Taiwan's Center for Disease Control says. COVID-19 cases continue to surge across Taiwan with nearly 10,000 seeking medical care last week. Taiwan's Centers for Disease Control said Tuesday, Focus Taiwan reported between May 4th and May 10th, Taiwan saw 9,978 outpatient and emergency visits related to COVID-19, a 66% increase from the previous week, according to the CDC. This marks the fifth consecutive week of rising cases. And you know what? I would not be surprised if they go over 10,000 next week. Despite the increase, the weekly case count remained lower than the 23,324 visits during the same period last year. So uh, we'll have to see. I don't think they're going to pass that number. But at the same time, that's it's still not a good number. They are seeing a rise right now. And it looks like they also recorded six deaths and 34 new severe cases. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. I believe that NB.1.8.1, am I saying that right? I believe that may be the variant over there that is concerning at this time. Sticking with the international front, taking a look at Hong Kong. Hong Kong is uh, seeing uh, alarming, I shouldn't say alarming, but they are seeing an increasing number of COVID cases. And unfortunately, there are two children in Hong Kong that are seriously ill with COVID. That's something we don't hear about too much over there uh, all that often. An unvaccinated 17-month-old and a 13-year-old with health issues are both in the pediatric intensive care unit. Again, something we do not hear about much over in Hong Kong, and there it is. The NB.1.8.1 variant does seem to be driving this. Uh, that's coming from Dennis COVID Info Guy, and a comment that was put by Mike Honey on there. So uh, that is interesting to see. And you know what? Let's skip and go to this. I had didn't have this lined up correctly. Take a look at this. Uh, International, once again, Queensland over in Australia, Respiratory Surveillance Report, May 7th to May 13th, 2025. Reported cases of COVID are actually up by 1.2%, 419. Influenza is down by 11.4%, 782 cases. RSV, 635. Now we know they are entering winter over there. COVID is going up with this new uh, sub-variant. Influenza may have peaked early, or maybe they're going to see a double peaking. Remember a while back they had uh, a tennis 
uh, I think it was the Australian Open, and COVID, or not COVID, influenza was going up at that time. That was a few months ago. So they really had an early spike or early rise in the number of influenza cases over there. Hospitalizations. Now, this is still not doing good for anything except for RSV. COVID, 64, that's up by 23%. Influenza, 68, that's up by 7.9%. Reminder, uh, usually hospitalizations for these viruses are, are a later lagging indicator. Cases would drop first, then hospitalizations. RSV, though, is dropping 44 or down by 2.2% at this time. It looks like the XEC variant is at 40% of the COVID cases. The old KP... 0.3.1.1 variant is at 21%, and XDV is at 15% of the cases at this time. Now moving to something here in the United States. This is in, I believe, Michigan, Ingham County. Remember there was a second uh, measles case there? Well, it turns out that it's a false positive test, and this person was tested for measles shortly after being vaccinated. And maybe that had something to do with uh, causing traces of the virus to show up in the measles test. And apparently it's a very sensitive test. So it did pick that up as a positive test. So second case of measles there on a child. Not the case at this time. They're retracting that. All right, moving on to Oklahoma. We're just basically showing this to uh, give you an idea of how many cases they have. And Oklahoma... Uh, Department of Health now reports that they've had 17 cases of measles this year as of May 13th. Moving on to Italy, I don't exactly know that this updated. Uh, it looks like maybe it's different numbers. We'll show it anyhow. This is the latest COVID numbers there. I don't think it updated, but you know what? We'll run with it. Uh, cases in the last 30 days, 1,006. 19 cases among healthcare workers in the last 30 days. Medium age of cases in the last 30 days, 69. Cases by sex, males, 49.1 cases, females, 50.9 cases, seven deaths in the last 30 days, and 414 recovered in the last 30 days. But mind you, this is as of, I believe, April 30th is what I'm seeing here. Uh, I'm not seeing any other dates, but yeah, it looks like the majority of these cases at this time are uh, not severe, so that's good to see, but nonetheless, they're still having deaths. They are still reporting cases. Take a look at this. Study links pre-COVID-19 lung health to severe COVID-19 risk. So, if you already had a lung condition, like maybe COPD, something wrong with your lung, asthma, so anything that could uh, impair your lungs, or maybe your lungs are damaged, prior to COVID, it increases your risk of getting a uh, severe case of COVID twofold. So, yeah, that's not good whatsoever. I will make sure this uh, study makes it into the archives. Of course, uh, datareport.info is my website. And yeah, take a look at this. Long COVID tied to substantial loss in work productivity. Yeah, and before someone gets ready to type down below, oh, well, it's the vaccines causing that. Stop. Stop right now. Long COVID started before the vaccines were developed to help protect us against COVID-19. Long COVID started the day COVID started occurring, which some people did potentially have COVID in late 2019. Then, of course, testing started in 2020. Long COVID started uh, becoming more known about as we got deeper into 2020. Long COVID started then. This problem started then. Yeah, this is not so good whatsoever. And uh, I think there's a lot of people that can raise their hand and say, yeah, since I've had COVID, Man, I'm just tired a lot. Uh, my productivity is down. Hey, tired a lot. That's me. I have, I'm dealing with fatigue issues post COVID. I'm still dealing with it. It's been the last couple of days have just been rough when it comes to that. And you know what? I can say this impacts my ability to do work. Yesterday I went to work a little bit in the morning to do some deliveries. We did yesterday's video. I was planning to go back out in the evening. I was just too tired to do it. I did just did not do it. Plus, it was raining here. I said, you know what? Driving plus being tired, that's dangerous. And unfortunately for me, that is not a good thing whatsoever. All right, moving on. Yeah, loss in uh, productivity from long COVID. A real big problem for millions of people around the world. Really, it is. I bet we're underestimating how many people deal with that problem. My website, datareport.info. A lot of information there. You'll see that study there and... 
who knows you, you'll probably see me add some more things before the day is done that one is definitely getting added to the mix when i make my thread this evening taking a look at what's going on with bird migration we are at the peak of it right now i saw a news story saying that uh I believe it was yesterday morning and again on friday we we're going to see the peak of this bird migration check this out wait till you see how high the numbers go today yeah close to 700 million if not almost 800 million we did see near 800 million the other day uh, if you're a bird watcher fantastic please do so safely birds could be carrying bird flu all right moving on now we get the update from the uk tomorrow Let's take a look at what is going on up in Canada. COVID-19 viral activity level is low. Flu A is moderate. Flu B is moderate. And RSV is less than moderate at this time. Taking a look at what's going on with air qualities in the United States. And you will see there are a few bad air qualities. You may see some tainted in the Northeast. We're having rain again. But uh, anything southwest of that Mason-Dixon line, yeah, not really tainted. That's legitimate. Uh, yeah, a lot of yellows going on there. Of course, we do know portions of the plains have been dealing with some near record heat, if not a few records being broken. So that doesn't make anything fun when you're dealing with bad air qualities plus heat. That can really put a strain on your lungs, especially if you have COPD or asthma. So, yeah, please be mindful of that. And we also see here on the West Coast as well, we do see just a couple bad spots in California. Really, not all that bad out there today, but the Southeast is having problems, as is our friends down in Mexico. They're dealing with some problems, and I could have sworn I just saw some Canada problems as well. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, a few issues up there. We'll have to see if there's any wildfires going on up there. Taking a look at what is going on with heat-related illnesses, we've been monitoring the issues going on in the northern plains. North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota have been dealing with some problems lately, and hopefully when we see this map today, Hopefully, it comes up a little bit better if it decides to load at all. But uh, heat-related illnesses, as we get closer to summer, they're going to become a bigger issue. All right, it's not loading. Just note that uh, there have been increased heat-related illnesses in the northern plains and some minor issues in the southern areas. Maybe we'll get that map to work tomorrow. Taking a look at what's going on in Pinellas County, Florida, we do see a few sick person calls, stroke showing up a few times, and even a few other things, which is not a good thing whatsoever. Tuesday in Philadelphia, there were 775 EMS incidents. I like this picture they used. It's been raining here. Yeah, we've been dealing with rain day after day. Uh, taking a look at what's going on right now in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, not terrible. Earlier was really busy, but I've been watching an increasing number of stroke calls today and respiratory emergency. Both of those things have been a lot of today, and also seeing a lot of fall victim calls right now. Don't know what that's all about. Maybe people getting dizzy. I honestly just do not know. Seems to have been a lot of them as well. Uh, Chester County has been busy pretty much the majority of the day today. Every time I check out Chester County, uh, take a look here. There's just a whole slew of calls. Sick person, unconscious person, falls, respiratory difficulty, EMS standby, stroke, respiratory difficulty, heart problems, diabetic, injured, heart problems, falls, sick person. You get the idea. It's fairly busy. Let's see what this is doing when we translate this over to the hospitals. And yes, we are seeing a few busy hospitals. I'm seeing one up in Reading, Pennsylvania. What's that all about? Penn State Health, uh, St. Joseph's, that's a behavior health issue. And let's just go down the list here. We do see emergency department overcrowding at St. Luke's Allentown. Easton has that and on behavior health divert. Uh, St. Luke's Anderson campus, yeah. Yeah, a lot of hospitals in Pennsylvania dealing with issues. How about New Jersey? Let's see what's going on there. And New Jersey, we do have a specialty issue going on at Inspira Medical Center, Mannington. And that's the only issue today, so not bad over in New Jersey. This week at Walgreens, the flu positivity rate is 0.94%. And when we take a look at what's going on with the COVID positivity rate, it's just at 15.5% this week. New York State. Really good news here. 277 cases. Uh, cases continue to uh, moderately drop. I mean, they're, they're really dropping at this point. This is some good news. I hope we continue to see this happen beyond Memorial Day weekend. We're not getting far away from that. Uh, we'll have to see what happens there. Hospitalizations continuing to drop as well. 419 people in the hospital. ICU uh, 41. My goal is to hopefully see maybe by the end of this week below 400 hospitalizations in New York State. That has not happened since when? 
Yeah, we have to go all the way back to November. And I'm thinking it can happen in your state where we can get below 400 hospitalizations and get back into the 300s. And who knows, maybe we get New York State to go even lower than that. All right, going down the New Jersey Turnpike, across one of the crossings from New York, and onto the Garden State Parkway, and we find ourselves in Oakhurst, New Jersey. Yeah, maybe I should have used this for today's concerning wastewater site when I did my short. This is really bad. Take a look at this. 50,000 population. Look at COVID here. COVID's listed high, and it's gone up one, two, three, four updates in a row. Now, that could correct, but at the moment, if you live in Oakhurst, New Jersey area, which is over near Long Branch, which is uh, not far from Asbury Park, you know, those some of those shore locations, the northern shore locations in New Jersey, they call it the shore, other states call it the beach, uh, you want to be prepared as if your COVID levels are really this high. Because you can see, they did have a big uh, increase back in March. Well, right now they're doing it once again. So this is relatively concerning. If you live in this area, please uh, take some precautions. And again, I'm not forcing you to take precautions. I'm just simply informing you that, hey, in wastewater, the COVID detections are really high in this area at this time. RSV is low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV. Still listed high, so that's still elevated. Take some precautions for that as well. And uh, MPOX at this time is low. And I'm not seeing a variant that's causing this. I'm not seeing a reason for it. Let's go somewhere else with wastewater. Let's go somewhere out to the west. Uh, let's see what's going to, on in Los Angeles. Let's go into Ontario, California. Remember, that was slightly cr increasing just about a week or two ago. And looks like it has come back down a little bit. COVID levels are low now. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, all low. Uh, HMPV is medium at this time. EVD 6A is low. Norovirus is low. And a few detections of hepatitis at this time. Now, going to the nationwide level, we're going to click on COVID here. The West Coast, overall as a region, is low for COVID. The Midwest, Northeast, and Southern region is listed at medium for COVID at this time. And when we take a look at norovirus, we see what's going on here. And we do see that uh, norovirus is in the medium category at this time in the Northeast, the Midwest, the South, and the West Coast at this time is low. And I did forget to add something today. Um, there was a story out of the West Coast. I believe it was near in the Seattle area. A school is dealing with a, a norovirus outbreak at this time. And take a look at Snow Homish. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I've said this one wrong before. Uh, first off, take a look here. COVID is medium. RSV is low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. EVD 6A is low. Norovirus is medium at this time. So, yeah, there are medium detections of it, which could explain why there may have been a school outbreak. Alrighty, folks, before we go today, we've got to stop and take the hydration break. Almost forgot to do it. Very important that we uh, keep ourselves hydrated by drinking water. If you enjoyed today's update, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year by subscribing down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, leave your comments down below. Do you have any suggestions? Do you have things that maybe you want to see on my videos? Or maybe it's something I'm doing wrong. Tell me whatever it is down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Wednesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.